Hey guys, how are we doing? We do a little um, tutorial on how to do horns and hooves and nails. And a lot of you have seen the GW things out there where they have a, a horn or a hoof that, that blends in from a light to a dark uh, and it does it by stripes. So in order to do this, we need uh, two highlight colors or two light colors. Here we're using a bone color and P3 is a Menoth white highlight. You also need a very dark brown. In this case, we're using Rhinox Hide. Um, your base uh, model should already be uh, painted black. Okay, so it's in order to kind of demonstrate this this technique. I'm just going to draw out a little triangle that represents a hoof here on a black piece of paper, and uh, we're going to get into it. I'm going to start off with the dark brown. You want to uh, make sure it's, it's thin, but it needs to be dark enough that it relatively blends and you can't really tell it apart from the black too much at a distance. Uh, you're going to start by placing the tip of your brush at the leading end of the hoof and draw it towards you or away from the point, uh, releasing pressure as you go and thereby making a thinner line as you go. And you're gonna do this a few times. Obviously here we're doing a kind of a large uh, piece so the thickness of the brush isn't uh, the right um, relative size. Uh, this will all work out when I show you on the actual model. You can do many uh, lines on here and kind of make it so it looks feathered at the end. That's absolutely fine. You don't want to go all the way up and cover up all the black. But you want to come back uh, enough that there is uh, a little bit of standoff and some room for you to work. Now you're going to go in with your uh, your high, your first highlight color, a bone, a kind of a darker color bone, and define those main stripes that you want to have that show the transition of color. Here I'm probably going to do more than you normally would on a hoof because of the size of the brush relative to the piece that I'm painting. Um, but the technique's the same, and you'll see it again when I, when I actually do the model. Um, here I'm kind of filling in near the uh, leading edge so that there aren't such uh, distinct stripes, I meaning there's not a lot of space in between those stripes. You want it all kind of meld uh, near the point. Again, when you do this with on a, on a normal size model, it will naturally happen because of the thickness of the brush. Now coming with the highlight color. Uh, again, this is an off-white. Uh, you can use any off-white. And what I'm doing here is I'm drawing the stripes inside of the bone colored uh, stripes that I already painted. And that right there is a basic technique. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and I have this uh, Minotaur and he's got these big uh, hoof toe things and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do the exact same thing that we just did to this. Again, we're gonna be starting with the dark brown and I'll try and hold it at an angle that you could see. Um, kind of odd, I don't usually paint this way, but I'm um, coming in with dark brown. Again, here we're using Rhinox Hide um, and kind of doing the base coat. Now again, it was very important that your dark brown is very close to that black color so that as you can see here, that there's not a huge contrast between the black and the brown. You don't want a big contrast between the black and the brown because that's not what gets this done. You want a subtle change. You can do third color if you want, in my experience, it's really not necessary, and uh, you'll see why here in a second. So uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick up our first uh, bone color. Uh, in this case, we're using uh, Ushop to be bone, uh, however you pronounce that, by Games Workshop. It's a pretty pretty dark uh, as far as your um, bone color goes. It's, it's definitely brown, not quite khaki, but uh, brown. Um, and you see here, uh, against obviously dark background, it looks very light, but I'm drawing these striations or these stripes. You don't want to do too many, and you want to keep them somewhat thick on this coat. You want it to be ultra fine, um, uh, but you do want them thick enough so that the next uh, uh, time you do this with the, the, the very bright highlight, you can actually have a thin enough brush to draw a stripe inside of that. Uh, stripe that you're drawing now. I don't know how else to you know, say it than a stripe. Near the tip, what you want to do is you want to come with the brush. You want to meld some of those lines together so there's not such a uh, great distance between the stripes. And you want to uh, kind of stabilize the color towards the tip, uh, meaning you want it to be a little more opaque. 
Um, as you draw the lines out, draw the initial lines with this first highlight, the first bone color, it's okay if it's a little thin and the color behind it shows through a little. In fact, you actually want that. It makes for a nicer transition. So once we got that done and we're happy with how that turned out, um, you're going to come in with the highlight color. And this is where you really need a lot of good control. Uh, you want a nice thin brush, uh, double zero, even triple zero is probably the way you want to go. And you want to just draw a very fine line inside one of those stripes. Make sure that the line is totally contained inside of that stripe. Uh, if it's not, then it's going to go outside, it's going to look weird, and there's going to be too much contrast between that bright color and the dark brown. And uh, once you get that done, that's really it. And uh, again, excuse me for moving this thing around. That staff is always in the way. Um, and then I'll bring it up here in a second, try and focus in uh, nice and close so you can see it. Now I'm going to focus in really ultra close, and you're going to see all the uh, the messy details of what things look like up very, very close. But, you know, as with any models, this is what it's going to look like when it really is this close. Um, a lot of these GW effects uh, that they do and stuff like this really has the desired visual effect at a distance. Um, so if you look yeah, real up close, if you want a uh, smooth gradation transition, you need an airbrush. But that's what it should look like there, you know, at a pretty um, close distance. And when you back away, there you go. So that's how they do it, folks. If you were doing a horn or something like that, you have a heck of a lot more uh, uh, problems uh, because you're a lot thinner, longer lines. But if you... Uh, Please subscribe. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll get to it.